same victory that was given to the Sahaba many times over throughout the world until they opened the entire world for the glory of Al-Islam. Not through dominance, but through the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala conquering the hearts of individuals. Why? Because they took this formula that Allah had given them in Surah Al-Saf and they implemented it. They put it into practice. They knew what it was meant to work for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they did it and they put it in their lives. This is the victory that Allah wants for this ummah. And it can happen at any time. Allah didn't say, do these three things and then after 10 years I'll give you victory. No. Allah says, do these three things and I'll give you victory. I'll give you help. I'll give you forgiveness. I'll give you Jannah. I'll give you everything that you want in this life and in the hereafter. If you just do these three things for me. So I'm asking you, brothers and sisters tonight, do you want the answer to this dua? Do you want it? Do you really want it? Then we need to show Allah that we want it. We need to really prove to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that our deen is more than our lip profession. That our deen is more than the words that come out of our mouth. We need to prove to Allah that not only are our lips subservient to Him, but our limbs are subservient to Him. Our, our, our wealth that He gave us is subservient to Him. Everything that He has blessed us with is subservient to Him. And we are willing to do whatever it takes and give whatever it takes to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that this ummah can gain the izzah that it once had. Because let me tell you, this ummah does not have izzah. It does, not, it does not have izza in the world anymore. Even some Muslims do have that izza still inside of themselves. Yes. But the ummah as a whole does not have that izza. The way the ummah is looked at today is like it's never been looked at before in history. Except with its exception. Except when it began as a strange thing. It's never been looked at like that ever be again. Until now. Until we are at this point, as our Rasul Sallallahu said, بَعْدُ إِسْلَامُ غَرِيبًا وَصَيَّعُودُ غَرِيبًا It would return, it began as a strange thing where it had no dignity, no honor, no nothing. And it would again return to that thing, that strange thing. فَطُوبَ لِلْغُرَبَى So glad tidings be unto the strangers. And we love to run around calling ourselves the strangers. I see it all the time. People will name uh, their, their organization something something, الْغُرَبَى And this and that, calling themselves the غُرَبَى And I look at them and I say, are you really a stranger? Yes, I'm a stranger. What makes you a stranger? I have no idea. I'm just strange because I'm a Muslim. Nope. That's not it. That's not what makes you strange. Because the Sahaba asked our Rasul Wasallam. They asked him, Woman whom? And who are these people? These strangers you're taking, talking about? Woman whom? Well, who are they? And what did our Rasul Wasallam say? Alladheena yuslihoon fasarinnas. They are the people whom when they see the people doing evil and corruption, they correct them. They correct them and the difference of the word yaslihuna or yuslihuna means that they correct themselves and they correct the people. They correct themselves and they correct the people. And there's another chain of narration not as strong but it says that they are those who when they see people corrupting my sunnah, they correct it. They put it back where it belongs. So both of those mean that the real strangers are the people who when everybody else is doing one thing, they're doing another thing and they're trying to correct those people from their evil. They are the ones that are active in doing Amr bil Maruf wa Nahin Anil Munkar. This is what made this Ummah the greatest nation ever risen for mankind. We like to run around saying that Islam is the greatest Ummah ever risen for mankind. This Ummah is the greatest Ummah ever risen for mankind. No, we're not. No, we're not. Because Allah says about that greatest Ummah, what does He say about them? Why? Because you command to that which is good and you forbid the people and abstain them from that which is evil and you believe in Allah. We only have one of those. We're not, we're not the catalyst for the world anymore. This ummah used to be the difference between right and wrong in the world. When anyone wanted to know what was right and wrong, they only had to take a look at the Muslims. Watch them and you'll know what's right and wrong. We used to be that furqan for the world, that distinction. We drew that line in the sand that this is right, this is wrong. Go here and you'll go to Jannah, go there and you'll go to hell. Now we don't know. We, we're, both of us, we're scattered everywhere. Some of us are on one side, some of us on the other. And some of us don't even know which side we're on. And we surely aren't trying to deal with the other people, trying to bring them to the right side. We are like scattered ants, having no idea and no direction of which way to go. This is the biggest 
problem that I see in this ummah today is that we're not that ummah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of, but we can be. We can be. There is nothing that is stopping this ummah. It's not going to take generations after generations. It can happen right now. It could happen right here in Sydney, Australia. It could happen right here in what, what town is this in Sydney? Auburn. 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 It could happen right here in Auburn. We just have to make the decision to change. That's it. We change. And then Allah will change everything else. That's all Allah is asking us to do in the Quran, correct? He says, I will not change the condition of the people until they change what is within themselves. So we already know that the conditions that we live in are set by who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only thing we can do is how we act within those conditions. And then Allah can change them however He wishes. But it will not change until we change. And we will not change until we start changing the way that we think. Until we change the way that we think, because as we know, the famous hadith is, uh, every action is according to intention, niyat. And niyat, your niyat, starts with a thought. Every intention, I don't care how big or small it is, begins with a thought. When we can change what goes on up here, we can change how Allah's word affects us up here. We can change how our Rasul Sallallahu command affects us up here and right here. Then everything else will fall into place for us. We need to ask ourselves during these nights of Ramadan when we're hearing the Quran recited to us, what is Allah telling me to do? And how can I do it right now? Not later, not tomorrow, not next week, right now. How can I do it? How can I begin to do something for Allah? Because if we all do our little part, let me tell you that the world can change. We as Muslims can change the world. I know that sounds like a pipe dream, but I don't think it is. I'm not just saying it because it sounds good and it's grand and it sounds like a, an amazing thing to say. No, no, no. I'm saying it because it's realistic. I'm saying it because I've looked at the history of this ummah and seen what they have done with less than what we have. I've seen this ummah do more than we have ever done with less than what we have. And they changed the whole world. A handful of people from the deserts of Arabia, 